Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good afternoon dear students, today is the second class on inflammation. Before dealing with today's topic, let us quickly revise what we learnt in the last class. We learnt that inflammation is a basic tissue reaction that happens in all our bodies and it serves two purposes. Number one and the most important being to destroy or eliminate any injurious agents for example, bacteria, viruses that gain entry into a body. And the number two is induces repair. At the site of tissue injury, it causes repair of the tissues. Then we learnt about the tissue reaction that happens in case of inflammation. We learnt that there are two important components. Number one being vascular and number two is cellular. So, under the vascular events, we learnt that initially in response to the injurious agent, the blood vessels show some changes. First of all, the blood vessels dilate in response to the histamine that is released from the mast cells at the site of injury. So, you also have learnt that the mast cells are the WBCs which have left the circulation and are residing in the tissues. So, mast cells are the first responders. Whenever there is any injurious agent that enters into a body, the mast cells are stimulated and they release histamine. Now, what does the histamine do? Histamine acts on the blood vessels. It causes vasodilatation and it also causes increased vascular permeability. Now, what do you mean by increased vascular permeability? Normally, the endothelial cells are very closely opposed to each other. There is no gap between the endothelial cells. Now, this histamine causes increased gap between the endothelial cells, right? You see the gaps between the endothelial cells. What happens when there is increased gap between the endothelial cells? The plasma which is present within the blood moves out into the tissue, okay? So, there is outpouring of plasma from the circulation into the tissue where there is inflammation. Also, we learned that because of the movement of fluid from the circulation to the tissues, there is stasis within the blood vessels. Now, this stasis what happens because of the hemodynamic changes, normally you know that the cells, the WBCs, the RBCs and the platelets which are the cellular components in the blood, they move in the center of the bloodstream, what is called as a laminar flow. Now, because of this movement of fluid out of the circulation, there is vascular stasis. Now, this causes the movement of these cells from the center of the stream to fall out to come to lie at the periphery. Okay, so, these cells which are in the center of the bloodstream now move towards the outside and come to lie in the endothelial cells. So, this is the first step. Now, what do we want in inflammation? We want these leukocytes which are a defense cells or the immune cells to reach the site of injury and destroy and eliminate them. So, the vascular events have helped the process of cellular events that follow. So, the leukocytes which are residing in the center of the stream have fallen out and they have come to line the periphery at the endothelial cells, what is called as margination. Now, so this is what we learnt in the last class. So, the, to summarize the vascular events, we learnt number one is vasodilatation, number two is increased vascular permeability, number three is stasis. So, all these are contributing to the cellular events that are going to follow in case of inflammation. So, let us move on to learn about the cellular events. So, we will move on to learn about the cellular events that happen in inflammation. So, moving on, we will learn about the cellular events that happen in inflammation. You can see a very apt description of inflammation here. 
the invisible waging civil war within a body. So, as we learnt, it involves two components vascular and the cellular. Vascular vasodilatation, increased vascular permeability, and stasis, which we dealt deta in detail in the last class. Today, we will focus on the cellular events that happen in inflammation, wherein there is emigration of leukocytes from circulation to the site of inflammation. So, leukocytes leave the blood vessels to arrive at the site of injury and it is a sequential process involves margination, rolling, addition, transmigration, chemotaxis and phagocytosis. So, these are the steps that happen before a leukocyte from circulation exits and arrive at the site of inflammation to tackle the injurious agents. Now, let us look at this picture. What you are seeing here is a blood vessel which is lined by endothelial cells. Now, we can see there is an injurious agent which has come into the tissue. Normally, these endothelial cells are very closely op opposed to each other. We learnt that because of the release of histamine at the site of inflammation by histamine, there have gaps between the endothelial cells, what is called as increased vascular permeability. Now, this results in movement of fluid out of circulation into the tissues and we learnt that this disturbs the laminar flow, wherein the cells which are focused in the center of the stream fall out to be arranged at the periphery, margination. So, this term is called margination. Now, you can see the leukocytes are moving at the periphery because of margination. At around the same time, the injurious agents or because of release of various other substances, the endothelial cells get activated. The endothelial start expressing certain addition molecules. Now, the leukocytes also have got activated because of release of various factors at the site of inflammation reaching the leukocytes. Now, the leukocytes find this very attractive. The endothelial cells, the, the addition molecules on the endothelial cells attract the addition molecules on the leukocytes and they stick to each other. Okay, so, they stick to each other, but this is a very low affinity addition. The leukocytes, because the uh, blood is flowing very fast, the leukocytes get detached because this is not a very firm addition. So, leukocytes get detached, again get attached, detached. So, they slowly stumble or roll over the endothelial cells, a process called as rolling. Okay, so, what we are seeing here in rolling is that the addition molecules on the endothelial cells and the complementary addition molecules on the leukocytes, they bind to each other. However, this addition is a very low affinity addition which gets disturbed by the fast flowing blood because of which they detach to only get further attached to the next endothelial cells and resulting in rolling. So, what are these addition molecules that are present on endothelial cells and leukocytes? The addition molecules on the endothelial cells are selectin. Likewise, those on leukocytes are also sel selectins. But the ones that are present on endothelial cells are the E and the P selectins, while that present on leukocytes are L selectins. So, these are complementary to each other. They bind to each other, resulting in rolling of the leukocytes over the endothelial cells. Now, what is happening here? We still see that the leukocytes are rolling over the endothelial cells. At this point, the leukocytes get further activated and you can see that they are shedding the selectins. So, the leukocytes have shed the selectins. At the same time, the endothelial cells are also expressing certain molecules. So, the leukocytes which have selectins have now shed selectins, in turn have expressed a new set of uh, molecules on their surface which is called as integrins. So, you can see that the leukocytes have integrins now which also have complementary addition molecules on the endothelial cells which are ICAM which is intercellular addition molecule and VCAM which is vascular addition molecule. So, we see here that the integrins which are now expressed on the leukocytes as they are getting more and more activated is binding to complementary addition molecules on the endothelial cells which are ICAM and VCAM. So, this brings about a firm addition between these two cells. In rolling, we saw that there was some addition, but it was a very weak 
affinity addition which because of which it is getting detached when the blood flows fast but now because of the expression of integrins and icam there is binding and this is a firm addition that is brought about between these two cells so that is the next step now what's happening here now they have firm there is a firm addition brought about by integrins and endothelial addition molecules next these leukocytes slowly move and extend their pseudopods between the endothelial cells to exit the circulation they leave the endothelial cells and arrive in the tissue this process of movement of leukocytes from the circulation to the tissue is called as transmigration or diapedesis now this transmigration or diapedesis is brought about by a set of addition molecules which are present on endothelial cells which is called as pcam or cd31 so the leukocytes are able to squeeze between the endothelial cells by binding to these addition molecules on the endothelial cells now the blood vessels are surrounded by tough tissues basement membrane and the extracellular tissues are very tough and have lot of collagen they resist the movement of leukocytes through them the leukocytes are able to digest this basement membrane and the extracellular tissue by producing certain enzymes which are importantly metalloproteinases collagenases etc so they digest the basement membrane and the extracellular tissue now once they have come into the extra cell extra vascular site now they have to move to the site of the injury wherever the bacteria or any injurious agent is there so, so that's the purpose they have to reach to the site of injury and eliminate them so you can see the leukocyte now moves to the site of injury and this movement of the leukocyte to the site of injury is called as chemotaxis it's called chemotaxis because the movement is towards a chemical gradient chemicals are released at the site of injury which attract the leukocytes causing them to to move towards the site of injury so taxis is movement and chemo is chemicals so it's a unidirectional movement of leukocytes to the site of injury which is regulated by chemicals so the most important chemo attractants that are released are the bacterial products themselves are very attract they attract the leukocytes also certain other products like complement components leukotrienes cytokines these are released by various cells at the site of injury which we are going to learn further in the subsequent classes so these cause attraction of leukocytes to the site of injury now once they arrive at the site of injury the next thing is they ingest these injurious agents whether it's bacteria viruses or any other injurious agent and they digest and kill them so they have accomplished their role they were actually meant to arrive at the site of inflammation and eliminate or destroy the injurious agent which they have accomplished through these various steps so the last process wherein the leukocytes cause killing or destroy and eliminate the injurious agent is called as phagocytosis so this picture shows all these steps in an animated format you can just observe this for a while there is margination of leukocytes towards the periphery rolling addition transmigration diapedesis and chemotaxis followed by killing so we'll just a bit about each of these steps which we learned so we learned that with increased vascular permeability fluid leaves the vessels causing leukocytes to settle out of the central flow and marginate along the endothelial surface which is called as margination or pavementing then we learned that there is a process of rolling which happens because of the addition molecules most importantly the selectins e and p selectins which are present on the endothelial cells a complementary to l selectins which are present on the leukocytes now binding of these two addition molecule causes weak addition which gets disturbed by the fast moving blood so this is rolling following rolling the selectins are shed and a new set of addition molecules we learned are integrins on the leukocytes and endothelial addition molecules which are icam and vcam 
this brings about firm addition of the leukocytes to the endothelial cells. Next we learned that the leukocytes which have firmly adherent to the endothelial cells now try to leave the circulation, move across the endothelial cells to the tissues, a process known as transmigration or diapedesis. We learnt that the addition molecules PCAM present on the endothelial cells bring about this action. Then the leukocytes have to degrade the basement membrane and the collagen and other tough tissues that surround the vessels. This happens because the leukocytes secrete various enzymes which digest these proteins most important being MMPs or mat matrix metalloproteinases. The chemotaxis we learnt is a movement of leukocytes to the site of injury towards a chemical gradient and this happens because of release of various chemicals most importantly is exogenous bacterial products, endogenous products like C5A, leukotrienes, cytokines. So, what happens when these chemoattractants bind to the leukocyte? It brings about the change within the leukocyte. The actin filaments within the leukocytes, they get mobilized and assemble causing movement of the pseudopodia. So, that there is an amoeboid movement of the leukocytes to the site of injury or stimuli. So, this summarizes these effects. This is a picture from Robin's base, pathologic basis. Uh, you can see the leukocytes are marginating, there is rolling, addition, transmigration and finally chemotaxis. So, this chart summarizes the addition molecules that are present which are responsible for leukocyte emigration, selectins, integrins, endothelial addition molecules and immunoglobulin superfamily. We learned selectins are of three types. E selectins and P selectins which are mostly present on endothelial cells and L selectins present on the leukocytes. Integrins which brought about addition are expressed on leukocytes. There are of further two types B1 integrin which binds to VCAM and B2 integrin which binds to ICAM. Endothelial addition molecules are ICAM1 which is intercellular addition molecule and VCAM which is vascular addition molecule. Now, we learnt that integrins and these addition, endothelial addition molecules brought about firm addition. The immunoglobulin superfamily has CD31 and PCAM which is uh, important in the process of transmigration or diapetesis. Now, what causes the expression of these addition molecules whether on endothelial cells or leukocytes? It is cytokines. We learn about cytokines in subsequent uh, class, but cytokines as the name says cyto is cells. There are certain substances which are released by cells which for example, macrophages uh, and other leukocytes which cause their expression on endothelial cells and also leukocytes. So, most important among them being interleukin 1 and TNF. These are released by macrophages at the site of inflammation and cause the expression of these various addition molecules like selectins, integrins intercellular and vascular addition molecules on the endothelial cells, PCAM, etcetera. So, here you can see a picture on the left hand you see the normal uh, tissue with the blood vessels and the leukocytes. Uh, there are only a few resident leukocytes like uh, lymphocytes and mast cells in the tissues. Otherwise, our defense cells that is the neutrophils, monocytes are mostly present within the circulation. Now, on the right hand picture you can see what is happening in inflammation. You can see the blood vessels have dilated and also you can see a lot of immune cells that is the phagocytes, neutrophils and macrophages which have moved from circulation to the tissues to tackle the injurious agent. So, this picture on the left side you can see the blood vessels, the neutrophils are actually have are showing margination. They normally reside in the center of the vessels, but here there is margination. You can see them being aligned along the endothelial surface. Next, you can see there is an attachment where the leukocytes are firmly attached to the endothelial cells, which is called as firm addition. The third picture is actually an electron microscopic picture, where you can see the leukocytes are squeezing between the endothelial cells. They are extending their pseudopodia and trying to emigrate and reach the tissue where they are required to fight against the injurious agent. 
So this is a picture of the tissue which shows a lot of inflammatory cells, the neutrophils, macrophages, also the clear spaces in between these cells is actually the fluid edema that collects because we learnt that there is a vasodilatation and increased vascular permeability resulting in this fluid accumulation at the site of injury. So, you see edema, you see lot of leukocytes and also you see the blood vessels there. So, this is the typical finding that you see in a tissue that is showing acute inflammation. So, what are the inflammatory cells that are present? Now, this picture here actually shows a microscopic uh, uh, image of a myocardial infarction or heart attack which occurs when there is a ischemia to the muscles. You can see thick pink bundles are the my myocytes, cardiac myocytes which are undergoing cell injury or necrosis. Now, the tissue here is dying because there is no blood circulation. Now, this is a stimulus for inflammation because the, these dead and dying tissues have to be removed by the body. So, you have the inflammatory cells reaching the site of injury which is dead tissue here. Now, early in the case of inflammation, you see mostly neutrophils. So, neutrophils are the cells that are present up to about 48 hours, up to 2 days the inflammatory cells which predominant are the neutrophils, after which the neutrophils are replaced by macrophages. So, up to about 5 days you see between 3 to 5 days you mostly see monocytes or macrophages and in the initial 2 days you see mostly neutrophils. Next coming to phagocytosis which is the actual process of killing of the injurious agent. Phago means eat, cyto is cell. So, it is a process of eating by the cells. Cellular process of eating is phagocytosis. Now, we have already learned phagocytes are neutrophils, macrophages and to some extent eosinophils. When we talk of phagocytes, we are mostly talking of neutrophils and macrophages and in occasional cases for example, when there is a parasite or there is an allergen, you find eosinophils, but mostly it is the neutrophils and the macrophages. Now, here you can see phagocytosis where the bacteria, the cell is actually eating up the bacteria to form and the bacteria is taken up within a vacuole which is called as phagosome which combines with the lysosomes which are packed with uh, destructive enzymes to form phagolysosome and then these bacteria get killed or degraded. So, this is the process of phagocytosis which we will learn more in detail in the next class. So, let us look at some questions. A tonsillectomy is performed on a 10 year old boy who is hospitalized for high grade fever and sore throat of 2 days. He gives history of recurrent tonsillitis in the past. The excised specimen is edematous and congested. An infiltrate of which of the following is most characteristic process occurring over here. So, basically this is a 10 year old boy who for whom tonsillectomy is done for fever and sore throat. So, most likely is the acute tonsillitis because it is a short duration and the specimen is edematous which we learnt occurs in inflammation and a lot of inflammatory cells. So, which cells would you expect to see when there is sore throat of 2 uh, days? So, it is neutrophils. The right answer is neutrophils because in the first 2 days the neutrophils predominate and between 3 to 5 days you have macrophages. Another question here, a 5 year old child presents with history of recurrent infections with gram positive bacteria such as Staph aureus. On further testing, the neutrophils show normal rolling, but inadequate addition on activated endothelial cells, which deficiency is likely here. So, here we are seeing that rolling is normal, but there is inadequate addition. So, we will just learnt that addition occurs by the binding of integrins on leukocytes to the intercellular addition molecules and vascular addition molecule on endothelial cells. So, it is most likely because of deficiency of integrins. What is the term that is used? Uh, used to describe lining of leukocytes along endothelial cells during the process of leukocyte emigration. It is margination. So, lastly, let us see which one of this is true and which is false. Diapedesis is movement of leukocyte towards the periphery of blood vessels. That is wrong because diapedesis is movement of leukocytes across the endothelial cells leaving the blood vessels to the tissues. PCAM is responsible for transmigration of leukocytes
to endothelial cells which is true. We learned that PCAM or CD31 helps in transmigration. Thank you.